All right. Hi, guys. Welcome. My name's Erin Worley. I'm a best-selling author. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a spiritual light bringer. And I am so grateful that you are joining me here today to talk about the five stages of grief. So someone that is inside of my coaching program, Unlimited You, just lost someone very close to him. And he asked me, about dealing with grief from a spiritual perspective, right? Because I think a lot of us, myself included, feel like when you understand oneness, understand that we are all one and that our loved one is simply returning to source, that we maybe shouldn't feel um, all the feelings around grief that we should be past that on the enlightenment mountain. We should just be feeling joy for them. And I can tell you from my personal experience, that isn't what happened. And that is okay. That means you're a human being. And that's a beautiful thing. So the first, well, there's five stages of grief. Okay. There's denial. There's anger. There's bargaining there's depression, and then there is acceptance. Now, everybody won't go through all of these stages necessarily. Most people do, and they won't necessarily go through all of them in order. Most people will find, though, that you will go through all five. Um, now, so let's first talk about when you lose someone you love. Part of celebrating their life is feeling these emotions for them, okay? It doesn't mean that you aren't enlightened. It means you're accepting your humanity and that's okay. It's so powerful to understand that, that it's okay for you to go through these stages, okay? So denial, first, we don't wanna believe it's true, okay? That's, that's totally normal. We don't want to accept it or we don't want to accept that we're going to have to go through the feelings. So we try to block it out. Now that's going to give way to um, probably anger, feeling really, really upset that this is happening. Maybe it's not a good time in your life. Maybe you have other things you're going through and it's just not fair. Maybe it doesn't seem fair for them. Um, and then that's going to give way to, um, to bargaining, right? Where you say source, the universe, universal, uh, infinite intelligence, universal mind, make it so I don't have to feel this, make this better for me, get me through this. And that's actually, you're on the right track because Whenever you're having a problem, you don't know what, how to deal with, give it up to source, say to source, I need your help. I need your guidance. Okay. And that is literally when you get the guidance, you get depressed because you need to get depressed to get through grief. Depression is a part of it. It does not mean you're doing anything wrong. It is vital that you get through those other stages and let yourself sink into that depression. Now, I don't think that there is any other time when I would recommend sinking into depression because it is usually, I would say, gain awareness over your thoughts, especially your subconscious thoughts that are making you feel like you're stuck and you're trapped and like there's no way out. They're making you feel miserable. When you gain awareness over those thoughts, you can start flipping them and telling yourself the thoughts that you want to think moving forward. That does not apply to grief. Okay. If you do that when you should be grieving, when you should be feeling that depression, what you will do is you will stuff those emotions down deep inside of you where they will fester and cause disease. They'll cause disease in your energy. They'll cause disease in your body and they will cause disease in your mind. You must feel your grief. 
Now, if that means you lay in bed for a few days and cry, if that means that you watch sad movies that make you cry, you or you, I, I think I would really recommend that you sit down with pen and paper and journal about how you're feeling. If you can get those thoughts out of your head about how much you miss this person and how it's making you feel that they're no longer here, that's when you start discharging that depression and these emotions and you start moving past it into acceptance. But until you get those thoughts out of your head, they're stuck up there and they're making you miserable. And uh, so you have to lean into it. You have to lean into these feelings of depression, these feelings of how am I going to go on without this person? You must lean into them, allow yourself to feel them. It's so powerful. You're going to get over it much sooner if you lean in and allow yourself to feel it. And, uh, and then you'll be able to enter into acceptance finally. Now, I'd also like to talk about um, what exactly happens when your loved one dies. When your loved one dies, they become part of source again. They return to source they are no longer a, a separate entity. Um, and that is the truth. Now, you can communicate with them because they still exist as memories and thoughts that have been created in universal mind. They're still, their essence is still part of source and is coloring source is creating what source is currently. So they are part of source, but they are in no way separate. So you can either communicate with them just simply by communicating with source and accepting that they have become part of source, or you can say source, I am the universe, God, I want to communicate with my loved one. And start talking that way. But that's also another beautiful way to feel the feelings that you need to feel to accept, to get to the acceptance stage of grief is to actually have a conversation with this person. Okay. Tell them the, the, the things you're feeling, how much you miss them, how much you appreciate all of the memories that you have together. Now that's going to get into another part. You know, I, I encourage you to journal these things out or at least speak them out loud because that starts getting them out of your mind, decluttering your mind of these things. But another beautiful thing that you can do is write down a list of all of the things that you are grateful for that you experienced with this person. And I'll tell you why. A big part of grief is this fear that we have lost this person and we'll never get back. That we'll never, we'll never be able to hold on to those memories, right? We'll, we'll keep getting older and they'll slip away and we'll lose them completely. So right now, while it's fresh in your mind, it's beautiful, beautiful and powerful to write down all the memories that you are grateful for that have impacted you and, and keep that in your bedside table or in your desk drawer. And especially in the beginning, pull it out once a day and read through that list of memories and allow yourself to feel yourself in those memories and, and you know, because memories are uh, imprinted in your subconscious the more you think about them. So if you want to keep that person with you, keep them with you through those beautiful memories you have with them. Um, so, you know, I, I hope this was helpful. This is something that is just part of being human and, um, it's, it's very, very powerful to accept it and to allow yourself to feel it. The more you allow yourself to lean into these feelings, feel all the feelings and deal with them, 
the sooner you'll be out through the other side of grief onto the acceptance train and really be able to sort of have joy that they have returned to source and be able to look back at those memories without the tremendous pain anymore and just be able to feel yourself feeling joy for um, for for what they gave you in your life, the wonderful gift it was to have them as part of your life. So all of my love to you, and um, let me know if this was helpful.